Hey there guys, Prince Laharakun here, and welcome back to Let's Play Disgaea Hour of Darkness. Oh man, <laughs> still not over the fact that I get to say that. In the last episode, we took on stage 1-1 and I explained a lot about character creation, and a little bit of other stuff too. But uh, in this episode, um, I did a lot of preparation off-screen, just to get my uh, characters ready just for everything in advance. I got Lahara and Edna back up to 6 a little bit. Uh, little Fu is level 6, and I'll explain why that is. Everyone is level 5 except Slim, who's still level 3, but that's okay, because level 3 is still decent for this part of the game. I have a new character here called Samus, which is my really witty attempt at using her as a means to just get the characters, uh, to get the Samurai class. And I've got three, three mages here, one of which whose random name generator sounds like Lugia, which I thought was really entertaining. And yeah, everything looks pretty good down here. Um, so real quick, since I did all that stuff, before we get started with the stage, I want to show something off real fast. I keep saying real for some reason. So since I leveled up all of my- a bunch of character classes to a certain level, we've unlocked some classes. Now, I didn't show this off, and I will in a second, but I got Little Foo's Bow Mastery to level 3. If you get any character's Bow Mastery to level 3, you unlock the Archer. Uh, the Archer is the only class in the game besides a couple of in-game classes that has an S rank with the bow. So, obviously, if you're going to use bows, you're going to want to get an archer ASAP. Um, I also unlocked the scout, whom you have to get a male warrior and a male brawler, I believe it is, to level 5, and you will get the scout. The scout is your default uh, gunner class. And, uh, yeah, there you go. There's a scout uh, class for you. Uh, then we got the rogue, and I can't recall off the top of my head how to unlock rogue. Real quick, rogues. Those are some absolutely horrendous weapon aptitudes, as well as his aptitudes in general. Rogues are not made for killing. Rogues will never be made for killing. You will never use a rogue to fight in this game. Ever. But, the catch with that is, as it says at the bottom, they easily fill the bonus gauge, and they're good at stealing. Stealing is a concept we haven't gotten into, but just assume this. The most percentage a character can ever have of stealing an item is 50%. Rogues can get up to 99%. So, because their gun mastery sucks, what I like to do is I like to create a scout and level up that scout's gun mastery as high as I can because guns are like default based on hit and all that stuff, and I'll get to that later. And then I'll transmigrate him into a rogue, and trust me, we will get into transmigration later. I didn't mean to actually go back. What I wanted to show, also while we're here, is the promotion exams, which test character for demon rank promotion because being level 0 on this is not very good. So as you can see here, we have a level 4 ghoul and a bunch of level 2 zombies. And uh, we're level 6 and we have some decent gear, so we should be alright against these and then watch a fail or something. Once you start a promotion exam, your goal is, well, first of all, Hedwig. That's kind of weird. Second of all, your goal is to kill these guys. And that's really it. And they're basically just testing you to see if you are eligible for this. This concept uh, was not kept in any later Disgaea game, because it was kind of pointless and silly. And I personally agree, but also sorry for the noise upstairs that you can probably hear. So this is something that isn't in any other future game, and here's Hurricane Slash, that I didn't show off last episode right now. There we go. And yeah, this is just something that's... I'm probably gonna... I'll do all of these off-screen from now on, because they're really... unless we show off a new one. But these really aren't anything special. Dang it, Mahara leveled up. Anyway, once you pass the exam... Uh, we'll go into Summon Assembly, and Lahara is now rank 1. Once he's hit rank 1, we can now get more expensive stuff, and make cheaper stuff too if we want to. And that's really cool, because now we have access to this. Since we have access to this, I might as well show it off. More expensive stuff makes expensive high-level items available. Sounds nice? Well, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, <laughs> holy crap stuff. Alright, so here's the Dark Assembly, the meat and potatoes of the Dark Assembly. Our goal is to get the most, the more expensive stuff bill passed. Why is that? Because this will make it so that in the shop we can buy higher level equipment, which we really want 
if we're going to be going on to anything more difficult than what we're doing now. So our goal is to make these guys here like us. That was a horrible example, because that guy loathes us. And that guy's in favor of us. And so on and so forth. As you can see, they're generally in favor of you, and they go all the way up to total support. Now, different types of monsters will have very different feelings of affinity towards you. How strong their support is towards you is dependent upon their senator level, which this guy is level 20, and our influence. I don't know the specific numbers off the, you know, at all, because I really, it, because influence goes away in later games and it never really mattered to me anyway. But basically, we want to get as many people to like us as much as possible. But here's the catch. As you see, we have a level 43 dude that simply loathes us. That's not good. So what we can do, is if we go up to him and highlight him, as you see the top it says, select a to give as a gift. This is called bribery. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> um, basically it's completely random in Disgaea 1 what the characters will want from you. So you just kind of go down your list and you just give them whatever they want. For example, he wants our RQ38 custom. It didn't affect him at all because he loathes us. Because we have very low influence and is not a good thing. So, generally, I don't, I don't tend to do this until we get into harder builds, but we'll see what happens, and uh, let's go ahead and begin the vote. Well, damn. <laughs> okay, so if you fail a vote, you're given two options. You're given the option to give up or persuade by force. At the beginning of the game, for the love of all that is holy upon this planet, don't persuade by force. <laughs> These senator levels will stomp you, and you will die. I mean, there's tactics around this, but don't do it. So we're gonna give up for now, and I forgot how difficult, excuse me, it is to do this at the beginning. So I'm gonna keep trying until I can get that passed, and I'll show you what happens when you pass it, because it is kind of randomly determined whether or not you'll actually pass them, so let's go ahead and give this another shot. There we go. Okay, I didn't have to cut anything out after all. So now that we've passed it, we have more expensive stuff. Hooray! And those are honestly the easier bills to pass. They, you almost never have to do anything terribly hard to get those passed. So we'll go ahead and check out the item shop. And as you can, as you can kind of see from that, we now have access to more stuff, such as the bogus spear, the long spear, the pixie bow. This randomly generated item list is not very good. But this is better, we have the Dolphin EX, and so on and so forth. And we have up to the 2000s in hell. Uh, weapon choices. And this will probably last us for at least another chapter. And the uh, same thing applies to the Battle Depot with the items and the armor. Like, see, now I've got fancy lid and such. Uh, we don't have anything new in terms of items besides the Am Starch, and we have a new healing item, but you can't really see it because the game didn't give it to us. Eventually, We'll get more than just armor as we progress through this, but for now, I will tell you guys if I... Oh yeah, and uh, as you saw, I didn't point this out, but as you see there, our product rank is level 1. Remember, your product rank cannot exceed your customer rank, so you can't just go in and out and constantly try to get all the high level stuff. You must raise your customer rank, and that's to prevent you from doing the very thing I just mentioned. Because it's pretty easy to get mana, and if enough mana to do that, because the mana cost, if I recall, does it change? I don't remember in, in this one if it does. Let me check. Oh yeah, it does. Never mind. I lied. But yeah, it's just there as a, as a safe to prevent you from cheating. And you can feasibly get the high level stuff in the later parts, but yeah. Anyways, I didn't want that to take 10 minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and do Blessed Court. Did I heal? Eh, whatever. This is a pretty nice place. Ah, that vase would sell for a lot. Fool, that makes us petty thieves. I can't disgrace the name of the Overlord. I have to be impartial and... Impartial and... What? Plunder everything! Oh, that's our prince. You're so ruthless. Hey there, you atrocious fiend! 
you cold-blooded monster. A demon among demons. Quit complimenting me so much. It's embarrassing. Now listen up. I want you to pillage and plunder anything and everything in this castle. Aye, aye, dude. <laughs> All right, and welcome to the next level. Things start to get a little bit more difficult here, but not by too much because this is, this is still pretty easy. But you can see now we're fighting our first human monster, human monsters, human enemies, and they're generally not too bad. So we're gonna go, we're gonna want to start off by taking out these ghosts here next to us and. This is where poor little Sun Kirby is going to come in into play, and I probably should have given him the Imperial Seal and not Laharl, but I needed Laharl for an example. What can I say? I also got to remember the controls in this one are a bit different than the future games. Such as you only can zoom in. Go Slim! There we go. And I think... It really doesn't matter at this point because everyone's kind of overleveled, because that's just what I had to do. Go ahead and get out some spears. There we go. I was trying to get at least one of those. Jeez. Alright, so now that that's over with. You can see here we've got defense 50% and attacks plus one. We're gonna want on these. These are really handy. And as you see here, they only take up two spaces, so if we're standing on those, then we're basically good. And I'll show what attacks plus one does. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, so with Little Fu, I kind of turned her into a mage. She knows all of the base elemental spells and heal. She is basically a boss, next to next to Weaver here. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of overdid it a little bit, but I tend to overdo it when I play this game. That's just how I play it. Alright, we've got a lot of characters out, we don't really need this many. If you're just playing this for the first time and you feel like you're overwhelmed, I recommend just making like one or two at, or just making like two characters that you think you'll really enjoy using that you think you'll need. And just making those characters really really good alongside your protagonist characters. Because your protagonist characters can and will carry you throughout the whole game if you let them. And that's important to know because I feel like a lot of people get really really uh overwhelmed in this game. And if you just take things nice and slow, and you don't try to do anything that, you know, is beyond the boundaries of a basic RPG, then it's not that bad, because there's all these bonus concepts, and the game kind of does make it seem like you need to use them. But it's like that Lisa NPC said, you can still beat the game with minimal knowledge, and you don't really need to do all of the things I'm doing. I just do them because that's just how I play the game. And I can understand that a lot of people probably... I can understand that some people probably wouldn't want to go that far. Alright, well, he got a double counter. That's really good. So, attacks plus one means that whenever I attack something on this square... Oh, maybe I can do three-person combo. Nope. 70% don't mean squat. <laughs> can we get a three-person now? There we go! The four-person ones of those look really cool if I can ever get one. Go ahead and move in Odin over here. I think I'll go ahead and have you have Weaver get the final blow on Bellinus. Actually, better plan. If I can lift the right character. We'll give this to Slim. I'll finish this. I gave them the wrong kill. <laughs> Wait. I'll finish this. No, I didn't. I'm just not paying attention, I guess. Oops. Yeah, that went that went right. <laughs> okay. Never mind. I I I derped up a little bit there. My brain just did not register that I'd already told him to attack. Okay, we're good. We've only got two enemies left. You didn't do anything. Let's see if I can't get a uh. No, not with that. Not with the way the ground is set there. 
I'll go ahead and do Boulder Crush. I'll finish this. Gone. Oh, you you would. <laughs> he would not die. I level one axe. I didn't. I don't. I forgot to level up poor Slim. I'm sorry, Slim. Not that you're watching these videos, but you know. Go ahead and bring Sample Man over here and take this guy out. <laughs> Every single time I ever say this guy, I think of Disgaea, and I make a really bad pun in my head. And I don't try to. <laughs> Give you the kill, finally. Get to level 4. There we go. Yeah, and... Just to show it off, I suppose I'll show off. Heal real quick. Oh, and she has up to level 3 version of heal, so she has quite the range of uh, options for healing, but she doesn't have the SP to really do anything beyond level 2 at this point. Within the capacity of SP that we have available to us. There we go. People got some experience, and we unlocked the Corridor of Love. And we're only at 17 minutes, so I think we'll go ahead and do that next. Because there hasn't been a lot of action, really. And I feel kind of bad. Also, I forgot to mention... Uh, off screen, since I did all the healing, we now have access to the dark hu the dark hustle. Good job. The muscle orb. The muscle hustle and the dark orb. So we're gonna go ahead and take those. I'm actually gonna go ahead and give Little Foo's... I'm gonna switch Little Foo's common orb with the dark orb. Because dat SP boost, yo. And the level 13 manager on that? I think so. That'll become a lot more useful when we get the item world, though. So we're gonna go ahead and do Vyre's Castle, Corridor of Love. Which doesn't have a storyline thing to it. In the later parts of this, there'll be a lot more storyline based things. Alright, so this map is very simple as well. There's a thing of water down here which is covered in blue, a uh, blue, um, geo symbol, which makes it recovery 40%, meaning that anyone who ends their turn on there will recover their HP by 40%. Nothing we really have to worry about, so I'll just leave that alone. What we do have to worry about, however, is Linda and Johansson over here. Linda and Johansson are level 4 and they have some level 3 ghosts here. These two guys, the, this guy and this girl I should say, will screw you up if you're not paying attention and if you're not at least decently geared. These guys will kill you, especially Linda. Mages will kick your ass. Mages are the most dangerous thing in this game because look at that intelligence. And that's just because she has a rare light staff. You want to be very careful of her and you want to kill her first. The reason she has low defense is because her intelligence is at 42, and at this point in the game, 42 intelligence is really dangerous. We've also got archers here, which is a really evil tease to everyone who's new to the game, because there's archers, and you don't have access to archers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stronger characters and move them up here, and we're going to take out these two ghosts, and we're, I'm going to move them along this path and try to... Uh, gather these ghosts and these archers towards them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the rest of the minions. Uh, we'll take out Slim first and get him in on the action here, but not on his own, of course. And we'll go ahead and bring out... bring out Weaver again. And... I'll go ahead and... We'll bring out Odin, too. Just in case. Now the problem that kind of sucks here is that he can get double attack, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to move Odin right here. That way he can't get double teamed in terms of attacks, because he doesn't have as high a defense as uh, everyone else does. And he also doesn't have anything extra equipped, and since these guys are starting to get to level 2s and 3s, that is dangerous. So we'll go ahead and end our turn and see what happens with, uh, with our attacks we set. Punk. Which, oh, she didn't quite get the kill. Oh well. And of course the ghost goes to kill Laharl for some reason. Yes, attack my strongest unit. Good job, ghost. Alright, so now we're gonna move Laharl over here. And we're gonna bring Etna over here too to join the ghosts and the archer over there. And then we'll go ahead and take them out one-on-one. -on -one. The reason I like to play defensively is because if I was to run straight up here, I would be at the mercy of all six of these enemies, and that's why I tend to play these games much more defensively. Because, like, she's gonna attack these guys, probably from a distance, and that's fine, because I know for a fact that these two can take care of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring out Little Foo, just in case any of them needs healing, in case I overestimate things a little bit, which I don't think I will, because this map's not that hard. 
So since he's on uh, that panel and I need to kill him quickly, I'm going to go ahead and show off a skill, and we're going to use Sky Lunge, and I'll show off that. That skill is unnecessarily loud. It also did not kill him, because he's a Muscle Brawn equipped. Which is probably there because he has... Yeah, I know why it's there. So we'll go ahead and Blade Rush. What? I thought I had... I guess I don't have... His name is Remiel. <laughs> That's funny for a lot of reasons. Don't attack Etna. We don't want to kill Etna. Maybe that ghost will go after Slim. Okay, so the archers did the thing I didn't want them to do. I definitely did not want them to do that. But it doesn't matter because we're on the recovery panels. So we're going to take Slim down here. We're going to hopefully give him the kill. Can't see what I'm attacking. They fix this in the later games, but you don't have a little window to tell you who you're attacking, and that's really irritating. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and have Laharl. Actually, I think I can... Can I get a Blade Rush here? with? Yeah, I can get a Blade Rush there. That's awesome. Like I said, Blade Rush is really handy. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and take down Fu. That sounded bad again. Every time I talk about little Fu, I'm always saying something kind of mean. I don't mean to. Alright. So as you can see here, we can't quite target these guys. And that really sucks. But what we can do is we can use a level 2 version of this. And if you press here, you can actually rotate it. And as you can see there, very slightly, which you can't really see too well on the capture, the little light blue area is targeted here, so we can actually target her from there, even though we technically can't reach her. The level 2 is honestly one of the most useful, just for that reason. And... I'll finish this. Gone. Didn't quite get the kill. I'll finish this. However, I did get a blade rush off on her. Here I blade come. rush up there. Yeah. There we go. Took out that ghost. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> she has 1 HP! <laughs> that happened last episode! <laughs> uh, just kill Remiel. It's not even worth it at this point. Probably could have had her go and take on the archers, but whatever. Okay, so we got him, though. Etna can't quite get over there, so we're gonna go ahead and end our turn. You are not sorry, even though I know that's not what you're saying. <laughs> no, don't cast fire on it. No, that didn't do a lot. Yeah, as you can see, I can very easily solo this map with just Laharl and Etna, which is why I'm trying not to use them too terribly much. Mm, but, yeah. Also, I don't like you, so I'm gonna overkill you. So we'll have you do a Sky Lunge, because that's your stronger skill. Um, and Slim can do a boulder crush. Die. Yeah. Drop dead. yeah, Skull Splitter is awesome. I love Skull Splitter. I also may have forgotten to have Laharl do an attack. There we go. I'll finish this. Gone. There we go. Now they're getting somewhere. And, I want to finish this off quickly, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move you over here, lift and throw Etna over here, because I'm going to have Laharl use Blazing Knuckle. Huh. Here come. And there we go. Map completed. That one was harder than I remember it being, that's for sure. Got a decent amount of health from that. And we unlocked the Hall of Caresses, which is the final map of Episode 1. But I'm going to be that guy. <laughs> this guy, uh. <laughs> and I'm going to heal real quick. About 628 health. I'm going to do that up at that stage next time on this guy, Hour of Darkness. Now, real quick, I do want to ask you guys. Since I've shown off the character creation, would you guys be alright with me creating characters off screen just so I can level them up and increase their uh, stats and whatnot? Or do you want me to show it on screen? Because if you guys are okay with me showing it, uh, just doing that stuff off screen, then that would make it a little bit easier on me. But at the same time, I could see the appeal of wanting to see me create a character on screen, just so I can show you what I did. 
um, I'll let you guys decide that for me. And uh, next time on Disgaea Hour of Darkness, we'll complete Episode 1. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Later, guys.